This is the Elite Mini B550 from Mini's forum. On the surface it looks like just another APU based mini PC but there's much more to it. This might be the beginning of truly modular PCs. If you've dismissed mini PC so far because of the lack of options as far as upgradability is concerned, then be sure to keep watching as this tiny system lets you upgrade pretty much all the components, from the RAM to the storage, the CPU, and even add an external GPU. This video is sponsored by ucdkeys.com. UCD Keys offers Windows 10 and Windows 11 Pro keys at super affordable prices. Currently, they have Windows 11 Pro for $21 and Windows 10, which is what I personally use, for just $14. There's also Office Keys of various kinds. I've used this service myself, as have lots of my patrons and viewers, and the service works great, and the keys work globally. We're partnering with UCD Keys for a special special offer by using the coupon code C30 you will get an additional 20% off of any purchase visit ucdkeys.com or click the links in the description the Minis Forum B550 system comes in this handy orange protective case. Inside you'll find all of the components to expand the Mini PC's functionality. There's a 9 volt power adapter included that will power the system, but of course if you want to add an external GPU, you'll need to use a dedicated power supply. More on that later. My review sample came with the Ryzen 5700G, so that's 8 cores and 16 threads, with 8 graphics cores based on the old Vega micro architecture. This unit also has 16 gigs of RAM, dual channels, so dim, which can be upgraded up to 64 gigs. There's an M.2 slot and my unit came configured with 512 gigs. You can expand this as you wish with any PCIe 3.0 SSD and there's even a 2.5 inch slot for SATA drives. As far as I/O, you've got pretty much everything you need with four USB 3.2 ports and one type C 3.1 Gen 2 port which which is nice to see. Line in and mic out, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, one display port and two HDMI ports. Unfortunately, they're not HDMI 2.1, so you can't do 4K 120 over the integrated HDMI, but if you add an external GPU, you can do it that way if it supports it. If you buy this unit barebone, so that's without a CPU or RAM or storage, it will cost you $319 plus shipping. So if you already have the components and want to transition to a smaller form factor, this is a very affordable option. The unit that I have configured here with the 5700G, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD comes in at $729, giving you a complete system ready to hook up to your TV or monitor and game or do some work. I'll talk about this more in the conclusion, but this could be a great buy if you want to build a new system but don't want to commit to one of the current GPUs on the market, seeing as a new generation is right around a corner. Let's take a quick look at the out of the box performance. I won't spend too much time on this as there are plenty of videos out there covering the 5700G. In Elden Ring, running at 720p low, I got 48 FPS on average. Unfortunately for now, there's no support for RSR on Vega-based APUs. I did ask AMD about this and they said there are no plans to support it for now. But in games that support FSR, we can enable it and there's a significant performance boost. So for instance, in Resident Evil Village at 1080p balance settings with FSR in quality mode, I got an average of 58 FPS. It looked pretty good on the LG C9 OLED that I used for testing, considering we're dealing with integrated graphics. And lastly, in Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p low, I got 42 FPS on average, which is expected as this game doesn't run great even on high-end hardware. So out of the box, this system will run AAA games at around 40 FPS if you can deal with 720p upscaled and 1080p 60 FPS in games that support FSR. Of course, once really exciting about this mini PC is the upgradability, especially the ability to add an external GPU. The process is relatively simple, but first let's open this up and take a look inside. Everything seems easy to access as far as I can see. For the sake of testing out the upgradability of the machine, I decided to swap the 5700G for a 5600X. It might not make much sense to lose a couple of cores in this instance, but if you are buying the bare bones version, I think it makes sense to see how 
how easy it is to install the CPU. The whole process took less than 10 minutes. While at it, I also added a 1TB SATA SSD, which was super easy to install. With that done, it was time to add the external GPU. To do this, you need to expose the PCIe connector by removing this bracket. Then you need to put together the included dock, which is very easy to do. Once that's done, you plug in the included power connectors to your PSU. I'm using an SFX PSU here, but you can use a regular one. Mini's forum told me they are working on a support for the dock that will hold the PSU, but that was not included in the review sample they sent me. Follow me on Twitter, at Cortex, and I'll post some pictures of the PSU bracket once I get that sent over. All that's left to do is plug in your GPU into the dock. I went with the Radeon 6900 XT here, which is completely overkill, but I thought, why not? Let's see how far we can push this. The whole process is super easy, and the end result is not too bad. Although I hope the PSU dock helps make it a bit neater. The cables showing like this is obviously not ideal, but if you're going to put this under or behind your living room TV, then it won't be much of an issue. I actually kind of like having the GPU exposed like this, and I'm going to be keeping this system as my living room gaming and media PC, although I might revert back to the 5700G. So looking at performance, it's as you'd expect. Now the ring is capped at 60 frames per second, and it ran at 4K max settings at 60 FPS. Cyberpunk ran between 55 and 60 FPS at 4K ultra settings, with FSR set to ultra quality. And Resident Evil Village ran locked at 120 FPS at 4K ultra with HDR on. As you'd expect, the jump in performance once you add an external GPU is massive. What's cool is just how seamless the whole experience is. So what are my thoughts on this system? While this is still in prototype form with several changes coming to the final retail version, reality is that this is very close to what I think the future of the PC could be, a modular platform that lets you upgrade components without needing a big bulky case and without compromising on performance. The numbers here could have been even higher. I suspect the CPU was constraining the performance a bit in Cyberpunk especially, but really you can play AAA games at 4K 60 or higher max settings on what started as an APU based mini PC. For future revisions of this concept, I'd love to see a Pico PSU included in the bundle or as an optional extra, preferably hidden away inside a mini PC chassis. I could see one running a 250 watt GPU off of a Pico PSU and the overall volume of the system would be considerably smaller without an SFX PSU. And perhaps in the not too distant future we can have Intel, AMD and Nvidia agreeing on new connectors, perhaps CLX based, where one could plug in components to a base dock without needing any cables. As for what it is now, who is the Minis Forum B554? I think this is a good option if you are building a new system but don't want to commit to a current gen GPU seeing as new ones are just around the corner. If you are okay with an AM4 CPU limited to 65 watts, you can plug in your current GPU to this and then upgrade to a new one at the end of the year or you can get the B550 with a 5700G and run games off of the integrated graphics and then later on add a discrete GPU when next-gen GPUs are available. I really like what Minis Forum is doing here and we desperately need more innovative products like this. Intel has their line of NUX which sort of explore the same territories but those have been priced way above what I think is reasonable for small form factors and they are still bulky compared to this. I think both AMD and Nvidia should should consider investing some R&D and create a platform for OEMs to build upon, or maybe even make their own mini PCs. A couple of years ago, there were some rumors that AMD might resurrect their Project Quantum mini PC, but unfortunately, that never materialized. Well, if a small company like Minis Forum can make something as awesome as this, imagine what AMD, Intel, and Nvidia could do if they put in the effort. Check the link in the description if you'd like to buy the B550 mini PC. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. For $1 per month, you can support my channel and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. If you can't contribute financially, then please give this video a like and share it on social media, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.